Hello everyone. This video is going to make you feel like you've been in this spa for an hour because that's how relaxed you're going to feel about the upcoming P4 exam, right? Now, the P4 exam is kind of new to us. It was introduced last year by CIA and since then we've only had three sessions, so a total of seven papers to fully understand what to expect. Uh, and that's not a lot, right? I mean, especially if you compare it with paper three, we have years and years of past papers. This one, not so much. So what I've done, what I've tried my best to do is to come up with the common themes that you see in those papers and try to share that information with you. So this is, that's what this video is going to cover, just to get you more prepared and, and to have the, the approach ready before the exam, right? The idea is to know what to do in the exam before you sit there. So the kind of template you want to have in your mind, you know, what to think, what to see, how to tackle one thing over the other, that sort of thing should be sorted out before you are sitting on your seat in the exam. So that's what hopefully this video will do. So I'm going to talk about the important things first and first of all the chapters that you need to learn for paper 4. Right now there are five chapters at the end of each unit there's a strategy chapter and you are guaranteed to be tested on those five chapters. So business strategy all the way to finance strategy. Right now obviously when you read those chapters you will know that those chapters are basically summing up the entire unit. So for example uh, HRM strategy which talks about how and soft HRM you might get a question on HRM strategy in P4 and you will be asked to talk about hard and soft HRM but you won't be able to do it unless you have read the other chapters in HR so in a way they're testing you on the entire syllabus but the questioning will be on the strategy chapters in those units Okay, now when you're sitting there, you have to figure out how much time to give to the case study, how much to the paper. So roughly you will spend about 15 minutes on not just the first time of reading the case study, but going back and forth. And, and I recommend that you do take that whole time and, and always look at the question first to see what they're asking and, and then make sure when you're reading the case study, just keep highlighting the things that this is what I would need for question one, this is what I might need for question two, because you don't have the time really, you have one or 15 minutes, you don't have a time to keep reading and finding information so make sure you're marking and, and spending that extra time in, in the beginning to map out your answer so 15 minutes for reading which gives you 30 minutes each for the two 20 mark questions right and, and please don't be scared about the 20 marker that you have to write five pages right you do not expect it to be writing you know about two three full answer sheets and only then you'll be awarded close to 20 marks they're looking for all the right things in your answer. So knowledge, application, analysis, evaluation, as long as that's there, two and a half, three pages is more than enough. And that's something that we can manage in the 30 minutes that we have. Okay, now there will be two questions, question one and question two, both 20 marks. And the theme that I've seen is that one of the questions will be testing you on the past strategies of the business. So what have they done since 2019, uh, let's say 2009 till 2024. And they'll give you little bits and pieces of information with it. And the other one will ask you to uh, assess and recommend a strategy for the future plans of the business. So that's the common theme. They will ask you to be uh, to talk about the business strategy in the past tense. This is what they did. This is what they could have done. This is what they did right. And the other one will ask you to recommend how to go forward. So this is what they should do. This is what they should expect. So that sort of tone is what you got to take. And the one with the past will always be attached with a timeline. So that timeline will be probably on the, and I think definitely on the first page. And the important thing is that with each year, uh, with most of the years, in fact, there are appendices that are attached to it. So appendix one, two, three, four. And whenever you are talking about your uh, these years in your answers, the appendices and the information within it, that's really forming the application part of your answer so you must talk about the appendices and and let's say there are six bullet points given in the appendices you don't have to talk about all the points you can talk about three of those and that should be enough and that also goes for the timeline right you may be given six different uh, time periods within the timeline 2001 to 2002 2002 2007 you know many you are not expected to talk about all of them right often the students the mistake they make is that they will want to include everything because that's what we want to show the examiners but you know the examiners encourage you to pick the most important things the most critical things in this strategy and talk about those first and if you talk about minimum three and a maximum of four of those years you will be okay plus 
even if you try to fit them all you won't have the time to do justice to each point so make sure you are focusing on the important and the most impactful points in there and discussing those first keep the number of points on in, in terms of the timeline zero so three maximum four and then that's it no more after that and then the second question which will be about the future of the business how should they proceed how should they go forward into the future that's where they'll be looking for the strategies and the techniques you see in 6.2 which is business strategy right now it gets a little bit tricky in there and and that's only because you know we've seen so many different types of questions in the last year that uh, you can't really be saying that there's only one type of question that appears so when it comes to the business strategy questions one question may ask you to simply develop a business strategy for the xyz business if it's asking you to develop the business strategy then you can use any of the 10 techniques you would have learned in there from SWOT, Pestel, Porter all the way up to Ansoff, investment appraisal, decision trees don't those 10 techniques are there for you to use and what I recommend is that you should have two from the analysis part which is the Pestel, SWOT, core competency, scenario planning, blue ocean and Porter's five forces these are the research the analysis part use two of those and then complement that with one of the strategic choice techniques which is your answer matrix decision tree force field analysis and investment appraisals so it releases three you can add another four if you have the time if you feel it will give more depth to your answers and that's all they're looking for if they're talking about a business strategy development question then they may ask you for a simply a question on implementation or they may ask you of the changes in corporate culture that the business we want to bring in and that sort of question is reserved for the implementation of strategic management which includes four things come up with a corporate plan make changes in the corporate culture you have to find new leaders and there will be resistance to change so you come up with some contingency plans so all of these things will are only part of the answer if they talk about either implementation or you see change in corporate culture or implementation of culture those sort of words written in there but recently in the November papers what I saw was that they were instead of giving asking you to talk about a whole concept they were focusing on special techniques and that's where I saw a question I think it was 2023 in November uh, paper 4 one where they were particularly giving you the external influences on the business and they asked you to evaluate the impact these external influences will have on the business now if they're talking about external influences in the question and that's the information you're given then you have to only focus on those techniques which allow you to assess your external environment which is your pestel which is SWOT analysis which is uh, Porter's five forces model all of these techniques uh, are then uh, applicable to that question so make sure you read the question very carefully if they are asking you to develop an entire strategy then the choice is yours but if they are pointing you towards a certain direction for example in this question the external influences then only those techniques will be applicable okay now of course your evaluation can include other techniques but the main crux of your answer that must be composed of the techniques for external influences and, and that's why i think you really need to know how you are graded for your answer so for a 20 marker there are three marks for knowledge so you know definitions are okay but they're not required but your understanding of the concepts the choice of the right technique that's what's going towards knowledge and your knowledge marks are a result of your entire answer not not just you know just a few lines or a definition so make sure you're talking about the right stuff throughout the answer you get to three marks for knowledge application is two marks so picking up the right information from the case study there aren't any calculations so you won't have to spend time on doing that it's just picking things don't miss out on using numbers in your application that is critical to your answers then you have eight marks for analysis and that's good news because most of us can can do the analysis part very easily right the analysis is all about advantages disadvantages impact on stakeholder you know those sort of uh, uh, those sort of conclusions in your answers are most you know we've done that since a, a very early uh, earlier time in our AS exams and now in A2 as well so analysis should be easy to do and that means there's seven marks for evaluation which used to be the other way around before so evaluation is a little bit tougher I'm not saying that it's impossible but it's a little bit tougher than obviously analysis but that's fewer marks so make sure you're getting your analysis parts absolutely bang on right so when it comes to evaluation there's a couple of recommendations that I have and and and, and follow them as much as you can 
Uh, first of all, make sure you evaluate each point as you go along. Meaning that at the end of each point, each paragraph, wherever you end your analysis, have something that is coming in the way of judgment, recommendation for the business. And that way, at the end of each paragraph, you will have talked about that particular problem for the business entirely. And on top of that, you must have a summative evaluation at the end of your answer, right? Either that's a develop business strategy question or asking you to evaluate previous strategies. Whatever the question is, they want you to talk about how everything went from day one to day Z. So you have to have that big paragraph of evaluation at the end. And that's where, yes, you can bring in some points from your answer earlier on that, look, I said that here and this happened there and this happened there. And that's why this strategy did not work. So that summation, that final judgment on good or bad must be there and with that uh, conclusion you have to further mention that if they did right what was the main thing that helped them to reach that you know success and if they did something wrong what they could have or what they should do if something in the future comes up that creates a problem so so that further evaluation another layer of evaluation needs to be there in that summative evaluation paragraphs. And then that's something that I've seen uh, students miss out on that they feel that, you know, in the end evaluation is just a few lines, three, four lines, and that's it. But the end evaluation needs to be uh, sort of your answer to, to the entire business that this is what I feel what really happened. So, so take good care in that last paragraph of your answers. Additionally, what I will also say is that expect any combo of questions. Meaning that I saw a question where they combined HRM with business strategy. So how different leadership style can be used in the change of corporate culture. So, so that's a combination that, you know, you may not have expected, but it's there. They asked you to simply evaluate the external sources in one, the external influences in one. The other one, they asked you to develop the entire strategy. So don't go with a fixed mindset that I know this is the question that's going to come. If it's a business strategy, I have to discuss 10 techniques. There is no guarantee. So, so know everything about everything you need to know about these five uh, chapters and have the develop the ability to mix them up when you're answering them the only way to do that is of course do there's only a few papers right the the, the downside about pay for being new is that there aren't too many past papers but the upside is that we don't have to practice too many and right? i'm sure most of you have done at least half of them already if not all of them so make sure you do all of them that's a seven seven papers 14 questions 14 questions for a Great for a paper that's going to be 20% of your grade. I think that's the time we can spend quite happily. So do that and that way you will be prepared for any, any combination, any type of question that you see in your answer. And one more thing, very crucial. Finance strategy is part of every paper. Okay, now what they will do is that they will give you sort of a table in the end. And in fact, let me give you some, um, you know, a, feed, uh, a little background behind it that since AS, I'm sure you would have learned that any business taking any decision will need to base that on qualitative as well as quantitative factors, right? So if you would have written everything that's just word, 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 word in there, that's just giving you half the idea of the strategy. So therefore, in every question, they give you a table on finance. And basically what they give, in, uh, give it in that uh, table is all the different calculations you've done in your A2 finance. So they'll give you ratios, they'll give you investment appraisal, they may give you um, uh, statement of financial position information, depreciation, you know, all those numbers. And since we've done those chapters, we know that what happens when the ratios go up and ratios go down and you know how different numbers in, in uh, ARR or NPV, what different meanings they have. So, so they'll give you a few of those with different years and they'll give you the, diff the trends in them that it increased by 2%, then by 5%, then fell by 6% or whatever. And finance strategy simply asks you to comment on how the business has done in those individual calculations. So if ROCE has gone up, you'll be quite happy about that. Owners are getting more dividend. If ROCE is going down, and of course the other, the exact opposite impact, you know, all of those commenting, which you would have learned in the other chapters of finance, make sure you know them really well, because finance is going to be a part of it. And, and you must include that in every evaluation of your answer. So don't miss that. And uh, yeah, I know for a spa video, you've seen some calmer ones, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to share this information with you and I hope it is fruitful. I hope that it's able to help you prepare better and just feel a little bit more ease with people for. 
so good luck and let us know how it went.